Hello and welcome to Food for Thought for Thursday, February 4th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Well, we're, we're continuing on in the second part of uh, a mini-series in the middle of this devotional study in James. We're looking at James chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. And yesterday we, we just stopped short on the first verse and spoke about uh, what the first verse in the passage had to say. And so today we're going to be continuing on in James chapter 5, verses 14 to 18. So James writes, Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church and to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. So as I was saying yesterday in the Food for Thought in the morning, um, the power of prayer in the name of Jesus cannot be understated. Uh, God desires us to participate with him in his plans around the world, and, and we're to be engaged with his plans. When our hearts are in sync with the Holy Spirit, uh, God shows us what it is that we need to pray. And James continues saying that if people in the church are sick, they should call for the elders of the church to pray for them and to anoint them with oil. Elders are often uh, close to God and, and are recognized as being close to God by the other members in the church. They're selected for those reasons because they have lived a life um, where they've learned an awful lot about following Jesus. And they're generally uh, people that um, are prayer warriors. The thought of this passage um, that James brings up here is that prayer offered in faith from the righteous person avails much. Now, nobody in themselves is righteous. However, those who have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus, those of us who have asked Jesus to be our Savior, we have been saved by his grace, cleansed by his sacrificial offering on the cross, and then filled with his Holy Spirit. In fact, we have been taken from darkness into light, and we are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Just like a robe wrapping around us, when God looks at us, he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So therefore, when a person who is a believer in Christ and has been saved and has been cleansed and purified by God prays, that person's prayer is powerful and effective. Some of us, however, we've had problems in our lives where we haven't totally given over everything to God. So we're holding out in different areas. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's some form of action in our lives where we've actually been sinning. Well, the Bible says that we're to confess our sins. And he that uh, confesses his sin before God, God is faithful and just to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, in a community of believers, it's good for us to pray with one another and to carry one another's burdens. And if we're struggling and if we're having a hard time in an area, an area, we should be able to approach certain brothers or sisters in Christ and have them pray with us and for us. And that, that distance that's between us and God will be mended. When we confess our sins before others and before God and have them pray with us, God hears our requests and, and he makes us um, right with him and and we come close to him. It's not as though if we are struggling in an area that God is not our father, we're still his children, but the issue is that of closeness. The special thing with this passage of scripture is that it recognizes the fact that a person 
can be out of sync with God and come back into sync with him. Um, elders are, are men, just like you are. You're a human being, and elders are no different. Elijah, as a matter of fact, was no different than you or me. He was a man just like us. Um, elders and people like Elijah are not to be considered as demigods, and it's not because of their greatness that that healing comes through their prayers. Um, it's not by the works of men or the efforts of men. It's not a special prayer, a special ceremony, a special effort by a man that brings healing. Healing is a gift that comes directly from the throne of God. It is a gift from the Holy Spirit. And this is why the elders anoint people with oil. Anointing someone with oil is a symbol of submission to the will of God and a recognition that only God can do what is being requested. When we anoint someone with oil for physical healing, the elders are, are saying, Lord, um, we have been set in this position by the people in recognition that we walk closely with you. But God, it doesn't matter about human positioning or human um, abilities here. This is all to do with you. So we ask you, we implore, O oh God, that you would touch this person and that you would, you would release your healing power upon their body. And, and that's, that's what this is rec recognizing. You see, um, there is an important link between faith and healing, though. Given the multitude of scriptures concerning faith and healing, we must conclude that sometimes healing does not occur because of lack of faith or better, the pleasing kind of faith that God honors. Again, we, we've got to be very careful not to assume that every time someone isn't healed, the reason is for lack of faith. There are other reasons why a person doesn't receive physical healing in the sovereign will of God. But the elders are the leaders of the people, the spiritual leaders of the people. And um, they are to be an example of faith, love, and purity. And God... God really values faith. You know, consider the patriarchs of the Old Testament. You know, by faith, Abraham was considered righteous. You know, God wants us to place our trust in him. Being human in every way like us, Elijah, he cried out to God who heard his earnest prayers and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. And then he prayed again that it would rain and the rains fell and the crops grew. Elijah was in sync with the will of God. Elijah and other people who walk closely with God are not a different species of human being. They are human in every way, just like everyone else. Elders, the same way. There, there is no um, difference between a new believer and an elder before God. They're, they're the same. We are human. We are in need of a Savior. And God uh, manifests His presence in each. But the elder has learned through time to trust the Lord and not to lean on his own understanding. He's learned because he spent time in prayer and in the Word. And he's learned to discern the will of God. This is so important for us to understand. See, we can't get close to God if we just sort of treat him peripherally as, you know, a go-to in our lives peripherally. God desires to be our all in all. He wants us to spend time with him. It's important for you to grow spiritually, to spend time in God's word, to spend time meditating on his word and praying to him and asking that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven and bringing all sorts of requests before him and waiting on him and hearing him and listening to him. It's only time spent with God that will bring us close to Him. This is why it's really significant here that the elders um, anoint the sick with oil. Because even the elders who spend time with God regularly and are examples of faith, love, and purity, even the elders recognize there's no human power to perform miracles. It is all about 
the Holy Spirit and his will and his sovereign choice. So the elders, when they place the oil on, on the sick person, it's like they're saying, God, we have nothing in ourselves to, to, to help this person. And we humble ourselves and we bow before you and we call out on you, God, for you are the only one that can meet this person's need. This is a beautiful thing. Um, and this is why it's wrong for us to, to pray to saints and that sort of thing, right? Because saints, Elijah, you know, people in the past who walk closely with God, they, they are humans just like us. If we spend time with God, if we spend time in His Word, if we pray, we will be close to God and our prayers will be powerful and effective. This is really good. And this is food for thought.